Good morning, Ur. So, what could you tell us about natural hazards like landslides? Do their impact rise with ongoing climate change? What do you think? Hi, Pietro. Thank you very much for inviting me for an interview. I'm really happy to be given the chance to talk about natural hazards and in particular landslides, which is my expertise. To answer your, your, your question correctly, we need to first understand the frequency of the landslides. On the global scale, landslides are the most common geological events. And they have two major triggers. One, are, one is earthquake, the other one is rainfall. Rainfall is closely linked to climate change. For example, in the tropics, we expect more frequent rainfall activity with higher intensities. So this means we will have more water in the landscape concentrated time-wise. So let's say instead of 100 millimeters distributed over a year, we will have this amount within a few days. So this means a shock of water on the landscape, which will likely increase landslide activity. Hence, I could easily con conclude that with the ongoing climate change, especially in humid regions, we will experience more landslides in the close future. Do human actions play a role? In other words, how much and how negatively do the human actions or ignorance affect the damages caused by the landslides? Landslides are deadlier in, in urban areas. Of course, when a landslide happens in the middle of a forest, it is, it is unlikely that these landslides hit a, a person, while in a city, the, the, this probability is completely different. Uh, that's why the urban landslides are deadlier. And where I put my focus as well, I study landslides particularly in the urban con context. And in the urban area, uh, since our urban activities, for example, building roads, building houses, change the natural landscape. Hence, natural landslide triggering conditions also change. For example, if we build a road, we might change the inherent slope angle. Therefore, it might this might increase landslide hazard level or decrease landslide hazard level if it is properly engineered. Nevertheless, recently in a study uh, with fellow colleagues, we proved that in the in in several cities globally, landslide triggering rainfall conditions are partly unified. Like for example, let's assume 100 millimeter of rainfall in one hour triggers a landslide in Japan, it does the same in Italy as well, because the geoengineering context are more or less the same. So the way we build roads are the same. The other aspect is the informal urbanization, especially in low and lower middle income countries. This is a serious problem because currently we have 1 billion people living in urban slums. Of course, these people lack resources to to properly build houses following uh, geoengineering norms. Hence, they might, be, for example, open terraces to build houses on steep terrain. But this opening terraces might increase the steepness of the natural landscape, which might, at the end, increase the landslide hazard level. Of course, these people are not guilty doing this because they have no other choice. But still, I believe we can indirectly help these people to avoid such areas where the landslide likelihood is higher. Is it a lack of knowledge of the possible risks or is it uh, an attempt to save resources, like financial resources, in the prevention of risks not always predictable or sometimes just underestimated? I understand your angle in this question, but I really have doubts whether we can really prevent a landslide. So let's assume we have a landslide, a sizable landslide near a, a city that may be endanger a few hundred people. 
so if we want to prevent this landslide we might need to put like maybe tens of millions of euros with the same amount that we will invest on this particular landslide we can identify many landslides in a regional area and rather invest on monitoring these landslides activity and develop early warning systems to give timely early warnings to those people in danger to leave the, the landslide impact zone once we anticipate a landslide activity. With this way, we might save lives and save also resources. Of course, if we could prevent the landslide from happening, that would be the best. But however, the, the cost of it is, is really, really high. Would a well-structured cooperation between scientists like you, policymakers, media and civil society, both nationally and internationally, make a contribution in mitigating hydrogeological natural hazards? I cannot agree more to, to your statement. Indeed, the, the, such a cooperation is the best to, 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 to mitigate uh, landslide impact. In, in some countries where landslide activity is frequent, for example, Japan, Taiwan, and Italy, there are organizations that target, uh, let's say, monitoring landslide activity, researching landslides, and informing, uh, in, informing the public, educating the pub public. And these activities all together decrease the lands impact of landslide disasters and fatalities. We could see that Taiwan and Japan are, are, are most likely those countries that experience the um, highest number of landslides. Nevertheless, the fatalities are maybe the lowest considering the number of landslides they experience. This is particularly important in low and lower middle income countries. So there the people have other concerns, other primary concerns than than landslide hazard, especially in those countries, I believe this kind of cooperation between uh, policymakers, civil society organizations, and researchers might really help help mitigating the landslide disasters, landslide impacts. However, I believe we are far away, uh, globally speaking, from this understanding of the landslide risk. Landslides are still underrated in the global context according to UN, UN report they are the least reported and least acknowledged natural hazards.